thought I'd give you a quick walk around of the Siege SX 2.7 milling machine. Um, just going to clean it up after doing some dry casting. Just quickly a bit of a brush down. So, an X and Y stage, uh, a, a head movement, so we undo the fixing on this side and then we can change the height of the head. We also have a, a scroll that allows us to move the spindle up and down or we can, oops, we can unlock the spindle and then we can move it like with a drill attachment at the side. I tend to leave it locked as I'm often using it on fine on a fine feed. And then on this side we have a, a lock for the actual scroll that an Allen key fits in. Simple on off. It's on. We change the speed with plus and minus in 10 RPM steps. And it will go all the way up to 2000 RPM. Or it will go, if I go all the way down, there you are. It's down at 40 RPM. That's the lowest point. I can swap the direction, forward and reverse. At the touch of a button, it tells me clearly on the display it's forward. So let's do some milling. Turn it off. This milling machine has a an MT3 taper in the spindle. And what I have fitted more or less permanently is an ER25 collet chuck with an MT3. And what that then gives me is a very simple, accurate chuck. If I remove this bit, I'll show you the chuck. So the chuck has a taper. The collets are these simple little spring collets. And then the nut, you don't get fooled by the nut when you look inside it. Um, it might be difficult to see, but you can see there's an offset. It looks like it's been machined wrong. You can see a taper at the front, and then you can see an offset washer. And that, that offset is so that when you put the collet in, you can get the collet in and out. So it goes in at an angle. You see it goes in at an angle like that, and then you clip it underneath that edge. And then you'll see on there, look, nice and simple. Now what you mustn't do with a collet is put anything in it. It will only work over a very small diameter range. So this is one that works from eight millimeter diameter down to seven. It perfectly fits then an eight millimeter diameter end mill. Now, we fit that back in. Start that off. And actually when you tighten it, even tighten it by hand is enough to stop the tool going out. But then I use a big spanner that's on the chuck, on the flats of the chuck, and then a C spanner on the nut. Just give it a little cut there and it's tight. I'm going to be using some of these uh, spring parallels, maybe parallels, just to offset a small quarter inch block. You can use a bit taller ones than that. So they normally come in a set. These are imperial ones. It really doesn't matter whether they're imperial or electric. But um, what I'm going to be doing is putting uh, an inch and no, oh, an inch and an eighth in there. You can take them out as a pair, set them back to back, and just put them in the, in the vice there, and that gives you a parallel. Then. Height that you can clamp that piece to, so you can just 
you can see I can push it right down onto those wavy parallels and now it's now parallel to the bottom of the vise and it's locked there. Now, 